The Tibetan Mastiff is a large-sized Tibetan dog breed. Its double coat is medium to long, subject to climate, and found in a wide variety of colors, including solid black, black and tan, various shades of red and bluish gray, and sometimes with white markings around the neck, chest and legs. This dog can run up to a speed of 32 kilometers per hour over short distances. The Tibetan Mastiff is considered a primitive breed. It typically retains the hardness, which would be required for it to survive in Tibet, Mongolia, Ladakh, and other high-altitude Himalayan ranges. Instinctive behaviors, including canine pack behavior, contributed to the survival of the breed in harsh environments. It is one of the few primitive dog breeds that retains a single estrus per year instead of two, even at much lower altitudes and in much more temperate climates than its native climate. This characteristic is also found in wild canids such as the wolf and other wild animals. Since its estrus usually takes place during late autumn, most Tibetan Mastiff puppies are born between December and January. Its double coat is long, subject to climate, and found in a wide variety of colors, including solid black, black and tan, various shades of red, and bluish gray, often with white markings. Some breeders are now marketing white Tibetan Mastiffs. These dogs are actually very pale gold, not truly white. Photoshop is often used to make dogs of normal color appear white in advertisements. The coat of a Tibetan Mastiff lacks the unpleasant big dog smell that affects many large breeds. The coat, whatever its length or color, should shed dirt and odors. Although the dogs shed somewhat throughout the year, there is generally one great molt in late winter or early spring and sometimes another, lesser molt in the late summer or early autumn. Tibetan Mastiffs are shown under one standard in the West, but separated by the Indian breed standard into two varieties, Lion Head and Tiger Head. Many breeders claim a life expectancy of 10 to 16 years, but these claims are unsubstantiated. Some lions do produce long-lived dogs. Other, more closely inbred lions, produce short-lived, unhealthy dogs. The breed has fewer genetic health problems than many breeds, but cases can be found of hypothyroidism, entropion, ectropion, dystichiasis, skin problems including allergies, autoimmune problems including demodex, Addison's disease, Cushing's disease, missing teeth, malocclusion, cardiac problems, seizures, epilepsy, progressive retinal atrophy, cataracts, and small ear canals with a tendency for infection. As with most large breeds, some will suffer from the elbow or hip dysplasia. Tibetan Mastiff, full quality. Muxar, dog show, the upper poncha, Tibetan Mastiff, full quality. Canine inherited demyelination neuropathy, an inherited condition, appeared in one of the prominent lines of Tibetan Mastiffs in the early 1980s. Unfortunately, known carriers were bred extensively and are behind many lines still being actively bred. Because the mode of inheritance appears to be a simple recessive, continued inbreeding can still produce affected puppies. Hypothyroidism is fairly common in Tibetan Mastiffs, as it is in many large, northern breeds. 
They should be tested periodically throughout their lives using a complete thyroid panel. However, because the standard thyroid levels were established using domestic dog breeds, test results must be considered in the context of what is normal for the breed, not what is normal across all breeds. Many dogs of this breed will have low thyroid values, but no clinical symptoms. Vets and owners differ on the relative merits of medicating dogs that test low, but are completely asymptomatic. Some researchers think that asymptomatic hyperthyroidism may have been adaptive in the regions of origin for many breeds since less nutrition is required for the dog to stay in good condition. Therefore, attempts to eliminate low thyroid dogs from the Tibetan Mastiff gene pool may have unintended consequences for the breed. Originally these dogs were used to protect the monks and Tibetan monasteries from animals such as bears and snow leopards. The Tibetan Mastiff is a phenotypically distinct dog breed that was bred as a flock guardian in the high altitudes of the Himalayas and the Tibetan plateaus. In the early 20th century, the Prince of Wales, George, introduced a pair of Tibetan Mastiffs, and enough of the breed were available in England in 1906 to be shown at the Crystal Palace show. However, during the war years, the breed lost favour and focus and nearly died out in England. The breed has been gaining in popularity worldwide since 1980. Although the breed is still considered somewhat uncommon, as more active breeders arose and produced adequate numbers of dogs, various registries and show organisations began to recognise the breed. In 2008, the Tibetan Mastiff competed for the first time in the Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show. Since AKC recognition, the number of active breeders has skyrocketed, leading to the overbreeding of puppies, many of which are highly inbred and of questionable quality. Initially, the breed suffered because of the limited gene pool from the original stock. By 2015, due to excessive breeding and unsuitability of the breed as a pet in urban situations, prices in China for the best dogs had fallen to about $2,000, and both lower quality and crossbred dogs were being abandoned. In 2011, a DNA study concluded that there was a genetic relationship between the Tibetan Mastiff and the Great Pyrenees, Bernese Mountain Dog, Rottweiler, and Saint Bernard, and that these large breed dogs are probably partially descended from the Tibetan Mastiff. In 2014, a study added Leon Berger to the list of possible relatives. Admixture with an unknown wolf-like canid. The Tibetan Mastiff was able to adapt to the extreme highland conditions of the Tibetan Plateau very quickly compared to other mammals such as the yak, Tibetan antelope, snow leopard, and the wild boar. The Tibetan Mastiff's ability to avoid hypoxia in high altitudes, due to its higher hemoglobin levels compared to low-altitude dogs, was due to prehistoric interbreeding. In 2020, a genomic analysis indicates that a ghost population of an unknown wolf-like canid which is deeply diverged from modern holarctic wolves and dogs has contributed to the EPAS-1 allele found in both Himalayan wolves and dogs, and this allows them to live in high altitudes. The dogs of Thibet are twice the size of those seen in India, with large heads and hairy bodies. They are powerful animals, during the day they are kept chained up, and are let loose at night to guard their master's house.
Mistress Girl.